Uh, and I'm absolutely confident that we're going to keep on making progress. Kerry Peters agrees with the president. The Michigan Democratic Congressman knew this day was coming and is glad he fought hard for GM's bailout and knew the 50 billion smacker spent would be well worth it, even in the face of a whole lot of Republican colleagues, some Democrats, who said we'd regret it. Congressman Peters here to say that the shoe is now on the other pedal. Congressman, good to have you. Great to be with you, Neil. Um, was it worth it? It's a little too early to tell, isn't it? Was it worth it? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, there's no question uh, that that investment uh, was absolutely critical for the American auto industry, particularly for those of us uh, in Michigan. As you know, uh, the auto industry is a critical part of our state economy and had General Motors and Chrysler both been allowed to fail and liquidate as a result of the credit crisis and the fiasco that we saw on Wall Street that, that brought our economy to its knees, uh, it would have been absolutely catastrophic for the state of Michigan. Certainly, I believe it would have been catastrophic for the whole country as a fact that this would have had a major impact on the manufacturing sector and the manufacturing just generally in this country, but it would have been catastrophic for us. And so you certainly don't think now the company General Motors would have gotten the same result in a, in a bankruptcy filing? No, in fact, I agree with your uh, previous uh, guest that you had on. Is It was pretty clear as, as General Motors was going into that bankruptcy. When you go into bankruptcy, you need debtor in possession financing. You can't get out of bankruptcy without financing. A company the size of General Motors needed billions of dollars. There was simply, there wasn't any money available. The credit markets were frozen. Uh, they weren't going to be able to get that money, and they would have been forced into a liquidation, not yeah. into a reorganization, but a liquidation, which would have cost, uh, in fact, a recent uh, uh, Center for Auto Research says over one million jobs would have been lost. Uh, that would have been a huge cost to the government, not we to mention that, just the incredible that, right? pain. We'll never know, right? Well, I mean, that's been the estimate of the Auto Research uh, Center, is that uh, if we would have lost uh, a million jobs. would have been absolutely catastrophic. Well, you're, and the right. Cost we'll, we'll that would have been you're right, Congressman. We'll never know. But I did want to ask you this. Um, we, I know in the financial reform uh, bill uh, that became law, that, uh, we have a too big to fail issue there, that there's no more too big to fail. I, that applies to, to banks. Does it apply to future GMs? If they get in some trouble, we just say, say it'll be. Well, hopefully the financial reform bill that we passed will, won't lead to the situation where you had General Motors, which in my mind the auto industry was the victims of what happened in the financial industry. When yeah. the financial industry allowed greed to run wild, you had a situation where we really had to hold our nose so uh, for these investments uh, in this. Special circumstance. It was definitely a, definitely okay, well, a special I got, circumstance. I keep jumping on you. Sorry, I apologize. But this house move on the part of Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid agreeing with her, uh, they're not going to compromise or give ground on this push tax cut thing. Uh, all the rates extended except those for the rich. What do you think? Well, I think, you know, I think I've been on your program before. As you know, I'm uh, one of the uh, Democrats that said that for right. the, uh, we should make it permanent for people 250 and below. I think there's broad, broad consensus there with both Democrats and Republicans. And for the folks who make over 250, this is not a time to be raising taxes on anyone. And well, I would support disagree. a one they, to two year disagree. extension. So nothing's going to be done in this lame duck thing, is it? Well, hopefully we can come together. We can have, uh, I believe, a compromise like can. can be made where we make it like permanent. Again. Well, hopefully, hope is always eternal, right? Yeah, well, it might be, <laughs> but. Harry Reid seemed to be Mr. Compromise yesterday. Today, I don't know, after talking to Nancy, it was game over. Now we're back to the hardened position. Well, we'll, we'll see. Well, you know, negotiations, uh, they always have the ebb and flow of it, uh, but it's important that we act before we leave. Uh, we've got to make that action uh, taken, and so uh, I'm sure we'll continue to see negotiations in the weeks ahead when we get down to the final line. Congressman, you're a good man and a great guest. Thank you very much.